Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. I'm the Kawasaki Crusader and today I'm going to show you how to install some fairly inexpensive LED headlights into the uh, stock headlights of a 2008 to 2010 ZX-10R. These I ordered online. I was able to get a set of them for about 60 bucks and um, they're actually really not too bad. They've got the white halo ring around it the red demon eye, a high beam and a low beam setting. So as long as you're fairly savvy with the wiring on your bike and how to cleanly wire some lights in, you should be fine. Um, not really familiar with this company, but they actually do have several different options. These were just the ones that I found that suit my bike the best. Um, and once they're in the housing, you won't really be able to see this blue, but I think it'll be really, really nice. This is just a extra housing I got off of ebay and um, i've got the nice one that's still on the bike so with that being said what i've done so far is um, i've got a piece of cardboard a pretty big piece soaking and i'm going to set it down in the middle rack of my oven and then i'm going to soak this towel and wrap it around the headlight set that on top of the cardboard and uh, bake that at 230 degrees for roughly 30 minutes. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can get the adhesive that's in this loosened up a little bit and get these clips to come off just fine and take the housing apart so I can build the lights in and make a really nice install. So what I did was I soaked this piece of cardboard for a, quite a while in some water. I sat it on top of a perforated pizza pan and then I wrapped the headlights in a soaked towel that I had laying around. And now I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven at 230 degrees for 30 minutes and see if I can get the headlight to come apart. Alright, you can see it's in the oven on the middle of the shelf. That way there's plenty of room and clearance. 230 degrees. Later, we'll see how it goes. Alright, it's been 30 minutes. We're gonna pull this steamy son of a gun out and see if it'll come apart. It's pretty hot, but 230 degrees is not hot enough to like hurt you. It even looks like it'll come apart easier. So we're gonna find out. Oh, steamed up the lens. It didn't quite work, so I went ahead and wrapped it back up. I'm going to throw it back in the oven. At, we're going to try 250 degrees for another 15 minutes. All right, so as you can see, I was able to take it apart after that. Um, I used a butter knife to pry around. If you look at the uh, housing itself, there's going to be a couple of points that are in the corners, like right here. And that, those are going to be really great for pry points. You don't want to just do it where it's thin plastic because you'll crack your housing. But anyhow, I was able to get the two lenses off. They are actual separate pieces. It's two pieces. So now that I've got that apart, I'm going to start disassembling the headlight mounts themselves so that I can find a way to attach the new headlights. So I'm taking the screws out of the front of this to take apart and see what it is how it's going to go back together it's like a little aluminum thing and then this is glass I unscrewed it from. the back so I got the glass lens out now an accident it's just kind of popped out looks like Okay. Looks like it's held together now by these last few little screws. So I think that's a 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna take those apart and get the back of this off now. All right, so I undid those three screws using a 10 millimeter socket and a Phillips screwdriver. And that freed the back of this housing up you actually don't need this housing for the headlight bulbs I'm using. They're a self-contained unit. They've got their own projector lens. So if anything, I'll just be hacking this up to make a mount, but I'll let you guys know how I'm gonna mount them in. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side taken apart and figure out what I'm doing next. I ended up spending quite a bit of time modifying the projector housing of the stock headlights so that I could secure the new headlight using the lock nut provided with them. 
Now, if you're not doing a third gen ZX-10R, this may be necessary depending on your bike's design, but for me, this was just a big waste of time. Also have to make some modifications to the interior there because that piece would definitely get in the way of my light. This is just a little bit bigger. I've already had it apart and tried. So I gotta make a hole big enough around here to show off the whole halo and demon eye. All right guys, so the battery to my drill died. In the meantime, I figured I would start modifying the other pieces of the housing that I need. This is going to be in the way of my bulb and I have to have this because this is how you adjust the headlight once it's inside the plastic housing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my air Dremel and a diamond tip bit to cut that off. I'll probably trim down those little peaks that you see on the side, those little support arms. And uh, if I need to, might even just follow this circle all the way around, depending on how easy this metal, this aluminum cuts, which I assume pretty well. Anyhow, I'm gonna get started using my safety goggles, of course. So I ran into a little bit of a problem, nothing too crazy. Obviously the light fits. I don't have the bottom of it on right now, but I can easily screw the bottom of it on. Um, the problem with this is the light is way too far down inside this. If you look at the housing for the other light, you can see where this glass sphere is, this glass lens. That's just about where that lens is supposed to be. And that's like down inside it. So what I'm going to actually have to do is go back to this piece. I'm still going to have to cut this ring off to make room to show off the beautiful halo, but I'm actually gonna have to find a way to mount the light into this. And I'm slowly but surely MacGyvering away in my mind, but it's gonna take some time, so bear with me. Learn from my mistakes. All right, so what I've done is I've drilled a series of holes all the way around this aluminum piece and I'm going to use a pair of pliers and just snap it off bit by bit. Then I'll use my Dremel and a diamond bit to smooth everything out and the light should fit perfectly in there and I'll find a way to secure it after. Just going step by step, figuring it out as I go. Making some progress. I got some of the little teeth broke off. This had some of those little support arms. Got a couple of them off. Really, it's just those two pieces left to get that off, and then I gotta clean up the area. No big deal, though. Okay, so I got all the pieces off, and I actually used my girlfriend's file here, her little welding file for slag. And um, as you can see, This fits over it, like snug, but I actually need it to fit into it. Like that. And I need the blue part to set down inside of it, so I'm gonna have to take off quite a bit more to achieve that because this has to sit over it, which I gotta take some off of this too, but I'll do that later, one piece at a time. So as you can see, I've drilled some holes around it to make some basically relief holes so that I can take this off a lot easier. I'm gonna go ahead and get that off and then sand it smooth and see if the light fits. So I got that little ring off, but unfortunately I cracked this piece um, I don't think it's going to cause too much of a problem. I've got JB Weld. I will definitely be JB Welding it. Uh, but also this piece goes on here and is held on. Like, I mean, this needs to be sturdy, but that's not going to be the end of the world. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this big file and I'm going to file down all the sharp bits and make it to where uh, it's nice and smooth. Get it a little more rounded. <laughs> 
but it's gonna sit just like that then i've got to cut that ring that's got to be pretty i don't it, you know this piece looks pretty chewed up and that's fine it's going to be completely covered but that part's got to be pretty so aside from the crack this piece is done um the crack unfortunately lets the piece open up wide and the piece slides all the way over it but whenever the piece is solid it won't do that so now i'm working on this piece so that whenever i put this on you'll still be able to see the entire halo because it's partially covered right now but i don't need to take much off of that so that's what i'm working on now okay so i made quite a bit of progress on this piece basically what happens now this piece at the bottom lifts up the light so the light sets in it this piece now will set on top of the halo or on top of the light but still expose the halo and then whenever i screw it all together it holds the light So, we got one. All right, so there we have it. I got one of them put together. You can see the whole ring for the halo is visible. I put it back together exactly how uh, it came apart. I just made my new light fit. And then, although it was pointless for me to bore out the back of this, I got a learning experience out of it. And now there's tons of room <laughs> for these wires to be plugged in. But there you have it, I got one down. So now I'm starting on the right side. Um, being as I've done it on the left side, it's now known to me that I only have to modify these two pieces. So what it's gonna boil down to is me removing this edge, like I did on the other side, and then also um, removing this as well. And once I've got that done, well, actually it's all the way around this. But once I've got that done, then it basically will slap together. I just want to be a little bit more careful and not break anything this time. And now that I've got the light put in the housing, I went ahead and hooked it up to a power source so that I can test and make sure I didn't damage anything in the process of putting the light into this housing. So I've hooked up the red demon eye and the white halo ring just to make sure it works and it does i'm not sure how well that shows up on camera but it doesn't look like i damaged any of that all right so the next thing i'm going to test is just the normal lights looks like that's working just fine all right here's low beams low beams work fine and then uh, a little treat for you guys i'll close my eyes but i'll let you see it does have a strobe function so that'll be neat once it's hooked up. But the light didn't get damaged in the process, so it looks like I'm halfway done here, guys. All right, so as you can see, I was able to build both of the lights into their housings. They're very sturdy. I can shake it, hear no rattles, nothing feels loose. Um, mess of wires hanging out the back, but we will minimalize that once we actually install them on the bike. But they're completely done. I've tested both of them. Both of the lights work. All right, guys, so this is the actual full-on headlight housing that I bought to make these. I'm actually not going to end up using any of it except for the things that I built the lights into, but I wanted to show you how it looks once it's in there. It's kind of, those lenses are really foggy on this beat-up old set of headlights. But you can see that's how they go back in. They're going to look great, but... I wanted to do a video of how to build these. I've never built them before and I used minimal tools all pretty much from Harbor Freight. So if I can do it, you can do it. Okay guys, so the plan is to remove those stock headlights so that we can install the ones that we built. But to do that, we have to remove all of the fairings from the middle and front of the bike. So basically on these, this is, this is the 2010, so the fairings are a little bit different than the 0809 because on the 2008 and 2009, this is two separate pieces. And on mine, as you can see, it is one solid piece for the whole nose. And that's the piece we have to remove so that we can get the entire headlight 
housing off. So we're gonna start by removing all these screws to take that bottom piece off. Then we will remove these, uh, this screw, this screw, uh, the body pins. There's some um, underneath here, like right here, if you look, there's a little plastic body pin. Well, there's an, another one there, another one there. There used to be one there, but I removed it and never replaced it. We'll be replacing that this go around. Anyhow, you gotta remove all those. Take off these pieces to, uh, or these screws. Take off, take off these screws so that you can remove uh, this fairing piece. And that will give you uh, room to start undoing the screws that hold this guy in. Got to take the windscreen back off. Got all kinds of stuff to do today. So I'm going to get started. I appreciate you guys for sticking with me this long in the video. Also, I feel like it should go without saying, but you should get one of these little magnetic dishes to keep all of your screws. That way you're not losing them as you go. All right, as you can see, I got the first piece off. I did remove it on both sides. It's the exact same on both sides. Just four screws. It kind of looks crazy without the fairings on it. But anyhow, on to the next. Okay, so I was able to remove this piece from both sides by taking out this screw and this screw as promised. Be careful when you're removing this. There is a little hole here with a rubber grommet for the plastic spike that comes out of your fairing. And if you're not careful, you'll snap that and have a, have a real bad day. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take off the wind screen. It's just gonna be these bolts that come all the way around. And I'm gonna take off my mirrors, which is just two screws from this side. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt here and a 10 millimeter bolt here on both sides. And once I get that done, you'll start to see some magic happen. All right, I got the windscreen off, just a couple screws, but I don't know if you can see that yellowish tint to it whenever I, you can really see it good there. But anyhow, that's what happens when you buy a $30 windscreen off the internet. Next step, we're gonna undo the mirrors, take those off. Undid the two little 10 millimeter bolts that are on the other side of this to remove the mirrors. Got those little junky mirrors off, which honestly, on the right bike, they'd be great, but they're not great on mine. So uh, that's fine. I left the wire, I left plenty of wire because I do have my new mirrors coming in soon and I will be installing turn signals in them and installing a monitor in at least one of them. So stay tuned for that funness. But anyhow, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I've got to undo this on each side, this on each side, and I believe this Phillips screw on each side. You can see it there, you can see it better over here. They ran the wires in and like these little clips. I gotta undo that so I can get the fairings all the way off without damaging anything. But we're almost there, guys. All right, guys. So I've got the screws out of there, there, and wherever the heck the other one was at. And all of them on this side, of course. And that leaves this pretty free to come off. The only thing left, this is really on there, sturdy. So I gotta do a little look. So next, what I think I'm gonna try to do, so I can try to take this all off in one piece, I'm going to take the four screws out of the ram air and try to take the ram air, the gauge, and the headlights off all in one piece. Wish me luck. All right, so I've got pretty much everything done uh, so I can remove it, but I need to unhook all the wires for the lights. So there's this little amber light in the corner and this light, I had to unplug those wires on both sides. And then over here on this side, same thing, I just have to unplug the, the lights, but I also on this fairing, need to undo those wires. So I'm gonna get started. And after I do that, it should come completely free. 
right, so I also went ahead and undid the screws on each side of the speedometer where it stays, but I'm still having a little bit of an issue getting it completely freed up. I'm not exactly sure why, but I, I gotta get this undone so that I can unplug the speedometer. But after I, I do that, I'm good because I already unplugged these wires and everything else is completely free. It'll come right off. So once I get that done, I'm good. I'm ready to take my headlight completely off, steam these, put the new ones in, and put it all back together. So I was able to get this to come off, but I had to pull on it a little harder than I was comfortable with. It's just tucked in there real nice. So all I got to do is unplug that. This whole piece comes off. There you have it, boys and girls. Truly not as bad as I expected, but still, that's, that's not fun. So now, I've just got to figure out how to get the headlight out, and I think it's actually just gonna be these two 10 millimeter bolts. And that's it. Okay guys, so I got those two 10 millimeter bolts out that I said I was going to get. I moved my Ram Air out of the way and I believe this should just pick up. And it did. You have no idea how excited I am that I've made it this far in this project. So now we're gonna take this back to the house. We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna steam it. And uh, put the new lights in it put it all back together and then we'll start the wiring process all right guys i've had it in here for about three well i've had it in here for about 30 minutes now at 300 degrees so i'm going to pull it out and try to quickly take it apart before the adhesive cools down all right as you can see i was able to get it out and get the lenses off i'm sorry i couldn't film that part i actually don't have the headset mount anymore but I was able to get them off. So now from the other side, just like on the first set, we're going to loosen these three screws till these come off. Put the ones we built back on and call it a day. All right, as you can see, I've got them all together. I do have everything hooked up for just the demon eyes and the halo to test it. And it looks like everything is working. So there's the uh, halos with the demon eyes. Here it is with just normal headlights, with the halos. So it does work just fine. These headlights not only have dual high and low beam function, but along with halos and demon eyes, they have a strobe light feature. The wiring itself took a long time, and because we are already at 30 minutes, I decided to make a separate video of wiring and installation. This video did take a lot of effort to make, so please like, subscribe, and share the video. And as always, guys, ride safe and keep the shiny side up.